Hello everyone, I am Neo, and today our video will be special because we will be doing a comment suggestion. Today we'll be adding classes, and this will include a mage and a thief class, which will both be projectile based classes. So before we get started, we'll want to make sure that we have our assets. So I'm going to drop in a fireball, and then I'm going to drop in a throwable knife. And we also will want a player uh, sprite sheet with magic. So these will have frames with magic in them. And we can just go into our player, and we can drag it into our sprite 2D, replace it. And our sprite will actually have 112 horizontal frames. So what we'll want to do is create a new folder. This will be called auto tile or auto loads. And then we will create a new script. This will be called player data. And we'll just leave this empty in our template. So create and we can double click. We have it right here. So what we'll want to do is go to project files or project project settings auto load then we will go to under auto loads and select our player data and we can add it and there you go so the next thing we'll want to do is add an enumerator so enumerator class choice first choice will be mage second warrior third thief and then we'll add another variable. Variable class is equal to class choice dot warrior. And we'll save this. Next up, we'll want to go into our player folder and we'll create a new folder under that, which will be called projectiles. And under this folder, we'll want to create a new resource. And this will just be a basic resource. We will save this as proj base or projectile base. There we go. So already you can see we have our projectile base. We'll create a new GD script and we will load into it. We'll do extends resource and then enumerator weapon choice knife spell arrow. This will allow us to customize any weapons or projectiles we make more efficiently. So we'll do weapon class is equal to weapon choice dot knife. Export variable speed is equal to zero. Export variable knock back is equal to zero. Export variable damage is equal to zero. Export var image will be colon texture and we'll save this so once you double click on here you'll actually notice that we have all of these things that we can customize and so if we were to duplicate this let's say we're going to create a fireball we have an individual uh, resource file and we can change this to spell we can change all of the values here and under art we can just drag our fireball now for my case I'm gonna set speed to 150 pretty fast but not too fast knock back to 50 and our damage to 1 and I'll save that so what we're gonna do next is go into our projectiles and we're going to create a area 2d this will be called projectile now we're going to add a sprite to the, and we'll add a collision shape, and then a visibility on screen enabler. And we will also want to save this on our projectiles as projectile. Okay, so now that we have done that, we can add a script. We can start by initializing export variable projectile type resource, which will be where all our data for our special weapons will be 
instanced. Export variable projectile speed uh, colon int is equal to zero. And you can just copy and paste this for damage and knockback. So we will want to move on to onready variable player is equal to get parent dot get node player and then at onready var sprite is equal to sprite 2d var move direction is equal to vector 2 dot or vector 2 0 or just brackets and then velocity and then signal enemy attacked since the will well this projectile will be separate from the player we'll want to make sure that we can also signal to the enemy otherwise if we instance as a child the fireball or the knife would follow the player so we'll actually want to make sure we have our function func change projectile if player data dot class is equal equal to zero, which is our mage, project tile projectile type is equal to load, and then we will get our fireball tres. Now we're gonna to want to do the same if the player has chosen the thief class. And I'll just briefly create the knife. So these are the stats that I recommend for a throwing knife. And I have it here in the script. Okay, so now what we want to do is before we do anything in this script, we'll want to make sure that we have the player position be set to the position of where the projectile starts. Otherwise, it is going to start at zero, zero. So move direction is equal to player dot knockback direction. Then we'll run our function change projectile. Then sprite dot texture is equal to projectile type dot image. So if player dot knockback direction dot x is not equal to zero, we're making sure that we are not going to scale on the x-axis if it is zero, otherwise it will become nothing and will not see any projectile. Then sprite.rotation is equal to zero. And then there's sprite.scale.x is equal to player.knockbackdirection.x. And if player dot knockback underscore direction dot y is equal to one sprite dot rotation is equal to 90 if player dot knockback direction dot y is equal to negative one it is going to be rotation of negative 90 if player dot knockback direction dot y is not equal to zero, then sprite.scale.y is equal to player.knockbackdirection.y. Save that. Projectile speed is equal to the project type, proje projectile type dot speed. And we'll do the same for every other stat. save all right for the last parts we will want to do position plus equals movement direction times delta times projectile speed so wherever the player is facing times delta for movement times projectile speed for speed now we will make sure 
on our visibility enabler, if the screen is exited, we'll want to QQ. Save that. Now make sure that you have a collision shape. Otherwise, the enemy will not know if you've actually hit it. So we'll go under node, under projectile, and we will set this as a projectile in groups. And then under here, we will do area entered and connect it to our main script. So what we'll do is if area dot is in group enemy, area dot get parent dot knockback is equal to player dot knockback direction times projectile knockback. Area dot get parent dot health minus equals projectile damage. Emit signal enemy attacked. Okay, so now we'll go over to our enemy. So under our enemy, so we'll go under our attack box, which is where any attacks get registered and we'll want to go under area entered. So once we do that, we'll do if area dot is in group projectile, var projectile is equal to get parent dot get node projectile. If projectile does not equal to null, then projectile dot enemy attacked dot connect to change our health bar. Then we can save this. All right, so final order of business will be changing our player. So the first thing we'll want to do is make sure our player has an onready variable called projectile and is equal to a preload to our projectile dot t t s c n which will be right here you'll just copy and paste into there save and then next you'll want to go down to our attack combo and we'll do an else if and then we'll just copy and paste the following here and is attacking is equal to false variable world is equal to get parent well actually we don't need to do this is attacking is equal to true attack timer dot start animation tree dot get and we can actually just copy and paste this but we're going to change this to cast then variable instance is equal to projectile variable spawn is equal to instance dot instantiate add sibling spawn reasoning i'm doing sibling is because this way we are not parenting this as a uh, the projectile as a child of the player otherwise the projectile will move an instance alongside of the player instead of instancing and then going wherever it goes freely. So now we'll be adding animations. So now that we have our new frames, we can go down and this is an easier way of doing it. We can just duplicate our attack animations, change it to cast and then etc. We can expand this and we will be removing these parts because we want our attack box to be disabled because we are now a ranged class and we're going to change our animations. This way we have some casting animations. So the following, there you go. And you can just do this for the rest. All right, so I'll show you what I have added. So I added the cast 
under the idle, it will be going back and forth from there, making sure that the advance is to enabled. And under cast, we have the dotted transitions instead of the smooth transitions. And then that is pretty much it. It is in all directions. So lastly, we'll be adding a menu for our classes. So I'll just duplicate the main menu and I'll set this as class menu. We will enter it and we will just rename this to class menu. We'll remove the pop-up panel because there will be no settings here. And I'll edit this to say, choose your class. This can be our mage class, our warrior class, and then our thief class. Let's save this. So we will disconnect from this script because we'll make a new one. Disconnect from here, disconnect, and disconnect again. Save. So now we'll want to create a new script. We'll make this empty. We'll do function choose class, class num player data dot class is equal to class number get tree dot change scene to file then it'll just be the world there we go now we will connect our pressed buttons here choose class 0 and we'll just change it to the corresponding class numbers so this will be 1 this will be 2 so now we'll want to go to our main menu change this to go to the class menu instead of the world so under here we're just going to change some of the buttons this will be our mage this will be our warrior. And this will be our thief. Save that. So under our player script, under attack combo, we'll also want to make sure if player data dot class is equal to one, then what we're going to do is allow all for this. Otherwise, it is going to assume you are a, a ranged class. So once we've loaded, we can select our class. So it'll be thief in this case. And when we throw our projectiles, it can hit the enemy and he's taking damage and then he dies. So if we play as a mage, we can hit the enemy and fire fireballs at him from a distance. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video has been useful. Uh, please do keep adding comments because I do read them and your suggestions are greatly appreciated. Thank you all for all the support and all the new subscribers. It has been amazing. And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.